Hello Zebra Herd, welcome to Zebra's Arcade, a series where we try a new game every episode. And today, we're trying Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. This was originally a Game Boy Advance series of games, but now is fully remastered for the Nintendo Switch with brand new 3D graphics. This looks really cool, so I'm excited to get into it. So with that being said, let's get started with Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. So I guess we're getting started with things here. Welcome to Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. You must be Zebra. It's an honor to meet you. Nice to meet you now. Leo in the Orange Star Army. Say, is this your first time playing Advance Wars? I believe I have played before, but it's been so long that we should basically go in fresh. Yeah, splendid. Let me give you a quick rundown of a few modes. Versus is for multiplayer battles. In fact, you can play with up to four players on one Nintendo Switch console. Each participant has their own console and a copy of Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. You can play wirelessly as well. Gotcha. There's also the main gameplay mode, Campaign. There, the story of War's world will unfold as you battle against rival commanding officers. I'll tell you about some other modes soon. For now, I'd like you to start with basic training. In each training mission, I'll walk you through the game rules step by step and even offer some strategic advice. Make sure you're playing, paying close attention. For now, I'd like you to select Campaign from the main See menu. All right, sounds good. So we're gonna do Campaign. The war starts here. Let's move out. So I guess we'll do Advance Wars 1, and we'll get started. Okay, so we have our new game here, our new file. We'll do casual for sure. I think that's probably better for me. We have our field training right here. We'll go over the basics of troop movement and attack controls in this training mission in troop orders. Gotcha. Lesson one, troop orders. All right. So here's a little game board. All right, let's get started. We'll begin with a simple training mission to get you comfortable with the basics of movement and combat. Take a look at these two orange infantry units. They are both under your command. The blue unit here is an enemy unit. Oh, and this marker here, this is your cursor. Use L to move around the cursor. You'll also use this to give your units commands, see unit information, and more. Select this unit, please. Okay, for now, move your cursor over to the infantry unit I've circled here, and then press A to select it. So we go over here, select this one. When you select a unit, the area around it becomes highlighted. This area shows you the selected unit's range of movement. Now, order your unit to approach the enemy. Please move the cursor here and press A. It's right here, and we got it. After unit moves, this command menu will appear. The only thing this unit can do now is wait, so select wait, and then press A to confirm your command. Mm -hmm. Did you see what happened to your unit? Its colors turned darker. That means that this unit can't receive any more orders this turn, but don't worry, you'll be able to use it again on your next turn. Now select your next infantry unit. I've circled it for you here. So right over this way. I guess we can just walk straight up. See how the enemy's unit space has a red highlight? That means it's within a, the attack range. Since infantry are direct combat units, you need to be adjacent to your target to attack. Please move your unit next to the enemy so we can fire away. Oh no, I clicked on one. There we go, so we'll run up here and then just fire. Now just let the fire from the menu target and target the enemy unit. There we go, so red versus blue here. Who's gonna win as we all run in? So I guess we're sort of attacking, but they will shoot back a little bit, and do a little bit of damage to our infantry units. But it looks nice like we did more damage. Nice work, you did some damage to your enemy. You took some counter fire damage too, but since you initiated the attack, your unit fared much better. When you finish giving orders to your units, it's time to end your turn. To do this, first press A on an empty space to display the map menu. So I guess we go here. The map menu provides all the information and choices you need to, in order to enhance your playing experience. For now, I need you to select end turn to continue with the lesson. Go ahead and do that now. So, end the turn. And there we go. Our first turn in Advance Wars, going pretty well. Looks like they're gonna fire back at us though, uh-oh. With that being said, they should lose some units too from our counter fire, right? Definitely, so they're down to two points, we have five. What do we do now on day two? I guess more attacking. Mm -hmm. It's your turn again, but hang on a second. You see those numbers on the units? Those indicate each unit's HP, which means hit points. All units begin with 10 HP, but as they take damage in battle, their HP will decrease. When a unit reaches zero HP, it'll vanish from the screen. 
Notice that your unit currently has more HP than the enemy in the test. The unit that attacks first generally has the advantage. That's why you should pick your battles carefully and always try to fire first. Units lose some of their firepower when they get damaged, so it's better to fire on the enemy with this damaged unit. Let's select yours now. Or undamaged unit, okay, so. Commander. Commander, did you know there's an easier way to give attack orders? If I may, I'd like to show you. See that highlighted enemy unit? It's within attack range, so we can quick fire on it. Try selecting the enemy unit directly, so. Okay, so we just go like this. Gotcha. We just run in there and start firing, and that should finish them off which means they don't even get to counter fire. Really cool. Well done. Since you also defeated the enemy unit, notice that you didn't even take any damage. I call that a win-win. Congratulations, you have completed your very first field training lesson. I'm so are proud of you. for the next lesson? I think we are. So, lesson complete there. Good to see it, and we're able to move on to the next thing. So now we have cities and train. This next lesson will teach you how to capture cities and to use terrain for defensive cover. All right, lesson two, cities and terrain. So we're sort of figuring out the farther we get into it. It's definitely one of those games that you pick it up pretty quickly, but the deeper strategies can be pretty long to learn. Hmm, looks like the enemy has deployed a mech or mechanized infantry unit. These units are tougher and can even deal serious damage to vehicles. Lucky for you, I planned for this and gave you a mech of your own to practice with. Infantry may not be able to defeat a mech unit in direct combat, so you'll want to use the terrain for defensive cover. I think we'll start by teaching you how to capture cities. Let's select this infantry unit. It's right up here. I guess we'll just send it to the city. Neutral cities are colored gray, but they change to match your army's color when you capture them. Capturing cities is vital to your success on the battlefield, so please attempt to capture and control as many cities as you can. To begin, please move you, your unit into the city. Okay, so just like this, and then capture it. Voice up the capture command. We got it, so the city, I guess we still need to do 10 more. The city is now partly captured. It'll take a bit more time to capture it completely. Only your foot soldiers, meaning infantry and mech units, can capture a city. Each unit, each turn a unit spends capturing a city lowers the city's capture number by that unit's current HP. Be careful not to move a unit that's in the process of capturing a city, or you'll have to restart capturing it all over again. The same is true if the capturing unit loses all of its HP before the city is fully captured. Do your best to protect units that are trying to secure new bases as they are vulnerable during that process. Let's like this unit next. So we have here the mech unit. Great, now move the, the unit here and begin to capture this city too. All right, so I think this one might have more health. No, it doesn't, okay, it has 10, nice so. Work. Nice work, now select this infantry unit. And I guess we'll just send them to attack. Now fire on that infantry unit. Hey, wanna hear a tip? You can actually speed things up by holding ZR. Give it a try when you fire on that enemy. That would actually be great, so we'll just hold ZR, and we can zoom through this a little bit faster. <laughs> Since we really know what's gonna happen, that's good to see. Excellent. Okay, now select like this infantry unit. So way over here, I need to click this, and then yes. notice anything different? The movement cost is double in mountains, but such terrain offers defensive advantages that compensate for the extra movement cost. You'll understand better once you fire on the enemy. Go ahead, engage the enemy, and fire. So we run up here, engage with them, and you can see we're way up here in the mountains. They are too, though. Huh, okay. So I guess it didn't really change much. Yeah, they're in the mountains too, so. This enemy unit took less damage in the first when you attacked, didn't it? That's because of another terrain feature called defensive cover. Defensive cover in the mountains is this number shown here, a four in this case. The defensive cover on the plains is a one. The higher the defensive cover rating is, the less damage the defending unit will take. Does this make, does that make sense? Great, I knew you'd be a quick study. Now, please end your turn by pressing A on any empty space and selecting end turn from the map menu. All right, sounds like a plan. Wait, no, that's the wrong one. There you go. Day one is all finished for red team, but blue team gets to move in now and do more of the same. So they're gonna fire on our mech unit that's in the city, which is not the best situation because I think we can't defend against it too much. But I mean, I guess we were fine. And, I think these guys are just gonna fire from the, the mountains. So same deal here. I think we'll yeah, be a little bit more even with health though. Okay. 
Ooh, so we fired back there a lot too. So we finished things up pretty nicely there. We're in day two. Mech units really pack a punch, don't they? Luckily, even a neutral city still provides defensive cover. Another thing to keep in mind is that movement cost differs between unit types. Did you notice that the mech unit can only move two spaces, but wasn't slowed by the mountain terrain? Whenever you need information like this, just place the cursor over whatever you want to learn about and press ER. Pretty easy. This works for terrain features as well as for all unit types. Always remember, knowledge is power. It's a good idea to order your units to capture at the start of your turn. That way, you can be sure you won't forget to give the order. Let's select this unit. So over here, let's just do this again. A completely healthy trooper can capture a city in two turns. So have them stay put and get it done. So we can capture this, and boom, that city is all ours. Very nice. Great work. The city is, this is your city now. Notice how it changes color to match your army? Now select this wounded mech unit. I'm guessing this one will not be able to totally capture it. Because this unit took damage in the last round, it'll take a bit longer to capture this city. Keep that in mind as you defend your troops. Since your unit was hurt, it can lower the capture number only by its current HP amount, leaving it vulnerable to another attack. Let's attack this enemy mech unit instead. Okay, so it will damage this one down. And we'll just run it by to make it really quick. It's still sticking around though. Why don't you finish this training while I prepare for the next lesson? All you have to do is defeat all enemy units. So I think it'd be pretty easy just to um, get rid of this guy, but maybe I should help out with this. So if I were to turn, get rid of you like that. There we go, got them down to one. So at least I'll make it harder to defend. And then we'll attack you, and this should get rid of this infantry entirely. There we go. So they still have one sort of available here that we can't do too much about. So we will end the turn and see what they do in day two because they'll definitely try to damage our friends here in the city, but we'll attack back and knock them out, I think. Yeah, perfect. But they're gonna move in and try to do the same thing. This where it gets a little bit scary, but I think we can handle it. All right, day three coming in. We got some supplies there, I guess, just from the city. That's good. Um, and I don't think we really even need to take that other city, as long as we can just attack and get rid of them. And that's really what we're after, right? So if I just attack you guys like this, boom, we win. Awesome, so all their infantry is defeated. We get the victory. Hmm. I hope you have a better understanding of terrain defenses and capture techniques now. Focus on the strategies I've taught you so far, use them well, and victory will be yours. I'm sure of it. All right, lesson complete. I think that means there's one more lesson left to learn before we actually get started with our campaign. But of course, with a strategy game like this, that's to be expected. This lesson will teach you everything else you need to succeed in combat. All right, so we're sort of you know getting started for what it, you know this kind of game is pretty quickly. Lesson three: repair and transport. So day one, this one looks a whole lot more complicated. Looks like the enemy has surprised our forces and damaged these tank units. But don't worry, I'll teach you how to even the odds. We'll need to repair them in order to have any hope of winning here. This unit is badly damaged and out of ammo, so let's patch it up. Will you select this tank unit, please? So right over here, we have a tank unit, and we can also see some more information about it. Tank units have high movement ranges and are inexpensive, so they're easy to deploy. To repair a unit, just move it to any city building that you have control of, even your HQ. This is the only city in range, so please move it there. So way over this way, this will start to heal up. Gotcha. This tank unit will uh, unit will now recover two HP for every turn that it remains there. That tank won't have any chance or have a chance to recover if we can't stop the enemy tanks from reaching oh, it. And your other tanks aren't in great shape either. Luckily, there is a way to regain HP and block the bridge at the same time. I'll show you. First, let's select this tank unit. So over here, let's select this one. Now move the tank to this spot in front of the bridge so that only one unit can reach and attack at a time. Since enemy units can't move over opposing units, we can use the tank to block this bridge. This tactic is called building defensive wall. Huh, interesting. So we'll have you wait there. That tank won't last long in its current state, so select the other tank and I'll show you how to join them. Whoa. Great, now if you move this tank directly onto your other damage tank, they will be merged. Move your tank here and select join. That is so interesting, so we'll join them together. See, your tank is fully repaired, excellent work. 
When two units join, they combine their HP. Of course, now there's only one unit, but that's sometimes better than two damaged ones. I know that two units may seem better than one strategically, but running around with low HP is very risky for most units. Also, remember, damaged units deal less damage when attacking. Now your repaired single tank will be able to hold the bridge. And while that happens, your damage tank can be repaired. One more thing, when you join two units, it ends your turn, so make sure you anticipate that. I can see that you're really starting to understand the strategies of war. I have just a few more things to teach you. It's great to see that we have an artillery unit, but there's a problem. Our artillery unit is out of ammo, and it's almost out of fuel. That unit can't fire without ammo, and it can't move without fuel. In its current condition, it's practically useless. Lucky for us, we have some transport units available. Let me show you how to use them. These transport units are called Armored Personnel Carriers, or APC for short. Let's light this APC unit first. So way over here. Now, to make the artillery unit usable, we need to move the APC adjacent to give it some supplies. Move the APC here, and then select the Supply Command. So we'll move it right here, and then Supply. Very nice. Great job. When you supply a unit, you fill its ammo and fuel to the maximum levels. This time, we gave supplies to the only, only one unit, but APC units can also provide supplies to any other adjacent unit simultaneously. Don't forget, you can supply units by placing them in allied buildings, where they'll also heal. However, transport units are best used when you're on the move. Now that the artillery unit is ready, let's go ahead and use it. Please select it now. Here, artillery are indirect fire units. That means they can fire from a far distance without fear of counter fire. Artillery units can't move and fire on the same turn, but the range on an artillery unit is two to three spaces. And when you know it, looks like we have a target within that range. Go ahead and fire. So way over here we have this tank, so we can just fire at them. This is pretty cool. Launching that way over there. Ooh, that's gotta hurt four damage. That is crazy. Careful placement of indirect fire units is vital to winning battles. Try to keep enemy units from engaging them directly and you will succeed. There are other ways to win too. See these buildings? They are the headquarters for each army. We call them HQs for short. If you capture the enemy HQ, you'll instantly win the battle. Be careful though, the same rule applies to if the enemy captures your HQ. So always make sure to keep it safe. Now it seems like the enemy wandered too far from their HQ and left us an opening. However, your mech unit won't reach it in time to capture it. That's where having a second APC gives us the edge. Select this mech unit and load it into the APC. So this infantry, we're gonna move it into the APC. You can load a mech or infantry unit into any transport unit by moving them onto the same space. Go ahead and move here, then select load. Okay, loading you up. Yeah. Great, you've loaded the mech unit inside a transport unit. Now it's ready to roll out. Let's select the load, this loaded APC next. So I'm gonna go all the way down there. Using an APC to transfer, your troops will provide you with the extra distance you need. Try moving right next to that HQ. All right, and then we'll drop them. Perfect, you could wait here and the mech unit wouldn't take damage while inside the APC. Although, if the APC happens to get destroyed, both units will be lost. But right now, we want to capture the enemy HQ, so please select drop from the menu. All right then, so we'll drop that right there. Now place the mech unit directly on the enemy HQ, right there. There you go. Now that you have a healthy unit on your enemy's HQ, you can begin to capture the HQ on your next turn. Your mech unit is in place. Your tank has set up a defensive wall and your artillery is fully supplied. You're doing great. Just focus on capturing the HQ and protect that bridge. End turn and finish up. This should be an easy victory for you. So I guess for right now, yeah, we just end turn. We'll see some of those guys try to move over here, but that bridge is gonna block them. So one of them will get in here. But uh, that's it. Like nobody else can really do anything besides just like repositioning a little bit. So this next turn, in day two, we get some extra supplies. Do I just continue to capture? There we go. So now it's down to ten. Cool. So we're making some progress there. I think what we want to do. Can I attack this guy? Oh, I can. That's good. So there we go. Ooh, down to zero as well. So really great stuff there for sure. And then maybe what I could do is move this APC unit all the way back here. I could supply them, but it doesn't really do too much. We're just gonna wait for them to heal up soon enough, but I think beyond that, we just 
end the turn. Because what more can they really do here? Day two coming in. And they might damage this down a little bit. I don't think they'll be able to fully destroy it. And even if they did, they're gonna be blocking the bridge. Okay, they did destroy it, but that's okay. Okay, so day three is coming in. And I think immediately what we wanna do is just capture this again. Very cool. So we just captured it and with it, we should win the game. Congratulations. Your lessons are all complete now. You're ready to take on anything the worst world can throw at you. And just in time too. I'm getting reports that enemy forces have invaded Orange Star. One last thing to remember, keep an eye on your stats, but luck plays a small part in every battle. Keep this in mind and I know you'll do us proud. I'll see you around. Awesome, so there's all of our lessons complete. That took a good while to get done, but definitely is important to do with a game like this, because if not, we're just gonna get destroyed. So, there we go. Well done, with that, your field training is now complete. Congratulations, Zebra. So, how was it? Do you feel like you've got the hang of everything? Don't worry too much if you feel like there are still things you don't know. As you take on missions, I'll be around to teach you along the way. Ah, it looks like we're ready to get started with the story. Okay, so, yeah, we're gonna get started with the story a little bit in today's video with the campaign prologue. The skirmishes between two neighboring countries, Orange Star and Blue Moon, were thought to have been merely stories of the past. That is, until the day Blue Moon attacked without warning. Zebra, you will guide the commanding officers of Orange Star in defending their territory and fight to uncover the motive behind the sudden ambush. Our story now begins with Nell, commander in chief of Orange Star, as she trains a new recruit. Isn't that what we just did? I don't know. This isn't the time to be lazing about. Oh, uh, I'm up. What's the drill this time? No drill, we've got a real situation. It's the Madman Olaf. Er, that is, I mean, it's the commander in chief of Blue Moon. Our intel indicates that he's ordered an invasion of Orange Star. Blue Moon, huh. I thought they were through being the bad guys. We assigned a re recon team to investigate, and they just sent the word that the Blue Moon now holds Coral Fortress. We can't afford to lose that territory. Whoa. Right on, I finally get to do something. I'm gonna lead the way and save the day. I can't wait to see some action. Oh no, you don't. Not yet anyway. You need to listen and learn first. Our top priority is rescuing Coral Fortress for Orange Star. Watch closely, okay? Let's go. Okay, so mission one, tank ops. Briefing. Olaf has occupied Coral Fortress with a prized unit in tow. Take this opportunity to show Andy the ropes and tanks. All right, let's go for it. Hopefully we can defeat Olaf. Mission one, tank ops. I love the style of this game so far though. Like it's very reminiscent of the Game Boy version, but also has its own things to it that are really cool. Day one. A medium tank? Olaf means business. Even with all of our units, we'll need an airtight strategy to win. Mm -hmm. Okay, I get it. We need a strategy, a really good strategy. Nell, what's the strategy again? Do you need me to explain? <laughs> oh no, yeah, sure. <laughs> a strategy is a plan of attack. You don't win battles with just a show of force. I hope you've learned that by now. For the time being, we can ignore the medium tank and just make sure not to move into its attack range. Remember that you can always check a unit's attack range by moving the cursor onto the unit and holding B. Then let's make the most out of our tank and mech units by using the defensive cover of cities and woods as we battle. Placing the artillery here uses its superior range to our advantage, plus the river protects us from all but the enemy's infantry. Yeah. Then we roll in and save the day. Hmm. Hmm. Perhaps, but only when it's strategically advantageous. Every battle is different. There's more than one way to win, you know. Do you need me to explain the terms of victory? Nope, we already know all about yeah, that stuff. Yeah. I know all that stuff. Let's go get him, Nell. All right, so we have a lot going on here. I think we do want to move our infantry right here, as I said, because we can sort of long range hit their stuff. Okay, wait right there. Yeah, they can't attack and move on the same turn. And I could move this out here, to try taking the city and battle that tank, but that tank's a little bit different, right? This is a a medium tank, right? Something like that. Tank units have high movement ranges and are inexpensive, so they're easy to deploy. Is that different than mine? I guess not. Huh, it looks a little bit different, but maybe that's like there's just a difference in colors. We'll go here, and I think we'll just try to battle this thing, right? Because I can't take a city as a tank. So we'll fire at you a little bit and see what ends up happening. 
but it should, you know, be a decent start. And I'm really not the best at these kind of strategy games. I know I tried to play Wargroove a good few years ago and I really struggled with that one. But, uh, here, let's see. If I could take you, load you up. Can I load more than one? I don't think I can. So what we really want to do with that is just get them to move, drop here. And then can we get them? Oh, that uses their turn though. Darn, didn't really think about that. That's fine. We'll just move whoever we can, wherever we can. I guess for right now, if I could just get these units out as far as I can, we'll have them wait there. And then you just move everybody wherever we can, which some of them can't move super far, but, oh, and there's some cities down here I didn't even really see. So definitely getting those would be pretty helpful. We just need to inch over there. So we'll wait there for now. That looks like all my units for the time being. And we can also see, I think these are commanding officers, Nell and, uh, Olaf there, so we'll have to look more into that later. But for right now, that's our first day done. Now blue team gets to go. So the Orange Star Army is launching a counterattack. <laughs> I see you failed to notice my new weapon now. You'll soon tremble before the power of my of the mightiest ground forces ever. This will be a quick victory for Blue Moon. We'll see about that, but it looks like they are destroying one of the cities there. Oh, he's taking it over. Um, and they're, they are gonna go with this. Oh, they're gonna move my, what is it? My APC, UPC, something like that. It was APC. But they didn't really do too much beyond that, just sort of maneuvering around. So I think we can handle some things. We were able to resupply a lot of units there. And then I should be able to attack this artillery. This will be nice. Just damaging theirs down a little bit. Gets it down to two points already. That's actually a really good situation. Now. If I could get you here onto this city, start capturing that a little bit. And then same thing with you over here. Because if we take a look, normal city, ground units, gain supplies and HP in allied cities. So I guess maybe it's not like the most useful thing in the world to have you know, cities over there if we're not really using them. It really depends. Anyways, I wanna go here and attack you, I think. Just finish this one off. There we go. And that finishes you off entirely, very cool. I wanna use this unit. It could just go all the way over there. Oh, we can supply these guys. I don't think it does anything really. You can keep taking this one. And then this tank. I might as well make it destroy this. Even though we're still not taking this city, we're getting a little bit closer to everything. So there we go. Very nice. And then we definitely wanna move these units as far forward as we can make them. So even if that is, you know, just like over there or over this way. I think that's everybody moved, so we'll end our turn there. And now they get to go again. But so far, we're holding our own pretty well. They'll take another city, and we could always take it back. I don't know, they're gonna fight us over this way, but I think we'll be okay. It does get a little bit messy, but we're both down to equal health. Okay, so what I think I wanna do here, right? Oh, what is this Jeep down there? I think that's new, right? Day three coming in. Excellent, my CO power is ready. All right, Andy, this is a real teaching moment, so listen up. The CO power meter is the t on, in the top corner of the screen. The meter fills up gradually over the course of any battle. When it fills up completely, it will start flashing. That means it's good to go. When the CO power is ready, you can activate it by selecting power in the map menu. But keep an eye on your enemy's CO power meter as well. They won't hesitate to use their own CO power against us. No, I'm confused. Where exactly does the CO power come from? <laughs> Well, it comes from inside of you, of course. The exhilaration of battle kindles the flame of our special abilities. When that fire ignites, one's true talent can be unleashed. Mm. A talented fire? But how does that? <laughs> Never mind. Okay then, I'm ready to select my power from the map menu and then send Olaf's troops packing. So how do we do that exactly? I guess I just, do I have to press the button? I don't really know. Uh, oh, power. Trigger my studio building now like this. Come on now, let's have a little fun. What will this do? Whoa, it's all animated and everything? Lucky star? This is cool. Oh, whoa. So it's gonna heal up all of our troops, I guess, or something. <laughs> now my units are lucky. That means they have a greater chance of dealing high damage in battle. But that's just my own CO power. Every CO is different. So you should adjust your strategy accordingly. You can read the intel on your CO power or even that of your opponents. Just select CO in the map menu. Whenever you meet a new CO, I recommend checking there. Checking there. After all, knowledge is power. 
That is actually really, really cool. So we should be able to attack you, but I do want to see this unit. This is recon. Recon units have high movement range and are strong against infantry units. Got you. So I think we'll just attack you directly. Just like this. And they shouldn't be able to attack back too much. Oh, we totally destroyed them. How about that, Olaf? All right then, and then we should be able to destroy this one, I think, or at least do some significant damage to it. Oh, all the way down to three. It's really good stuff to see there. I think I might just want to yeah, work on fighting you off. I'll get some down to one, we're so, so close. And then, I guess I could just defeat them like this. You know, better than nothing, right? So all that extra damage going out is a big deal. Um, then I can move you past that, just to you know make some more progress. Because I don't think they're gonna move from that city too much. I mean, they might, but it's not gonna be the best situation for them, even if they did. Let me go into here, load this up, and then move this all the way over. Drop them off here. Just so that we're sort of moving everybody together. Capture this, and then the other one can get captured here too. Excellent. So we're getting somewhere with all this stuff. I think we're good to end our turn for now, but we should also see what Olaf's CO means, or the power. A Brigard whose tactical power prowess has earned him respect. Easily affected by the climate, he's strong in snow and weak in rain. Olaf's units ignore snow movement penalties, but rain affects them the way snow does other units. But what is his power? He's warm boots and rain clouds? Uh, Blizzard. Claws down snow, increase move, increasing movement costs for all units except his own. Olaf's units gain plus 10 to firepower and defense. Gotcha. Okay, now we can end our turn. Day three is coming in. And uh, looks like they're following after, but they really don't have too many more units left, so we can do a lot here. I think for now, I probably just want to attack you and defeat you. Just like that. Boom. And we do have to work on getting rid of the city soon, but I figure we should just continue to try to destroy their units. If we can do that, I think we'll be fine. There we go. They're down to five now. I probably want to get all the way over here and then try to get this guy in there. Oh, I can't do it this turn. Okay, Um, maybe I could have done that in a better way. But it's all right. And then I guess we'll work on capturing this city. Because what else are we doing here? I'll move you here. Wait. And the same thing over this way. And then this one can still capture this city. Down to three now, yep. Okay, so that's about everything. All I can really do beyond that. Move you over here. Captured. And move you up there. So we're doing pretty good. I think we're going to end the turn there. Wait. There you go. And see what they're up to. So they're trying to supply themselves, they'll heal up a little bit, but they really don't make much moves. So we are really looking like we're gonna win this soon. I did want to get this into here. Oh, can it not? Huh, or am I doing it wrong? No, I just don't think it can get into there. Okay, good to know, I guess. Hmm. Then I guess we'll get this one into there, load it up, and just get them a little bit closer. Drop them, actually we'll, we'll wait there, I think. And I guess we'll try to finish you off or something. I don't really see a better way to do this, so. Gotta get through this bridge. The city is right on the road. I love the art to this game though. It really is super pretty. But of course, we can make some of them go through the water, which might make us disadvantaged. We have zero defense up here instead of just one star of it, so we definitely take some damage from that. That's okay though. I think strategically it's still worth doing. Let's get you to capture the rest, or more of this one. I guess we didn't get the rest of it before. That's okay, we'll do that. Oh, because I made them leave, I'm so silly. Okay, so that's all right. We'll get you guys a little bit through the water, just have you wait there. These turns are turning out to be <laughs> a little bit slow, but I think that's okay. Have you wait right there, and then end the turn. So they might not move around too much here. But I think this one unit, oh no, yeah, they're just passing their turn. That's so interesting that they're not even really going for it. So, getting over here, let's fire on the U. Got it, that should get rid of them. This one tank can move forward if they wanted to. I think I'll just try to get rid of you guys. There we go, fully defeated, that was nice. So this tank can go all the way over here and just sort of prepare 
Because it has to be an infantry unit that takes the thing, I think. But, look at all the space we can get just to uh, continue to move you. We can supply, but once again, I don't know if that really does too much. And we can't quite attack you from here, but I think that maybe we could go into this mountain. I don't know. It'd be nice if we could. I don't know if that exactly works that way. Capture this one, so it's another city in our control. We might just want to keep them there so that they heal up a little bit. I guess them, definitely. So, wait and turn. Once again, I think they're gonna pass up most of their moves here. Blast it! We must not let this enemy overwhelm us! Oh no, oh no. This is a little scary, so this is the big tank. These do a lot more firepower, getting us all the way knocked down to one. Yikes. So what can we do to overwhelm that enemy? Hopefully something. Uh, I think for right now, we gotta come, oh, that's gonna use up their turn though, isn't it? Um, what if I made them attack first and then combine them with the other one? I don't know if that would work too much, but if we read up on this one, medium tank, Many medium tank units have high defensive and offensive ratings for grounding in it. So I think we will send you in like this and just attack this thing. And it only does one point of damage. It's so strong. Join, there you go. So that's one way to do it. And then if I could, while that's happening, drop onto here, maybe get you to steal a city. If we could capture the city, that'd be really good. And then what about this guy? Can he go over the, oh, he can't. That's sort of a shame. So, I'll just get this here. We'll wait it out. We'll see what ends up happening. I'm a little hesitant on how this is all gonna turn out, but. That's all we can do this turn, so we'll see. This tank might just walk up and destroy or defend their HQ. Oh no, they're gonna go for this thing. Okay. Luckily there's nothing in that anymore, so this is just where things get really, really scary. Um, Let's just try to capture it. It still needs 10 more, so I don't know how that's gonna work out. Oh geez. Um, but if I could even just get this here and attack it for a little bit longer. I mean, I could also try to like strategically block all that off if I were to like move here. Wait there. And can I undo moves? Oh, I don't think I can. So let's really hope this is the best idea for me. I don't know if it is. It doesn't feel like it anymore. I'll try to get you over here. And I guess just keep capturing the city too. There we go. So that city's our, ours now, so that's good. If I can't do too much more, I might as well work on that over here, capture that a little bit, and then move you over. I totally forgot about you. And the turn. What are they gonna do this time? Because if they can get rid of, ah, oh, there they go. So I think I have to start all over. This is where, like I've said before, I'm not the best at these kind of games, but luckily it didn't destroy us entirely. Okay, that's good. What do we wanna do here? Um, I think for right now, I need to, Continue to capture. We're not quite there, but if we could do that one more time, you know, it would be enough. So I think we just try to get rid of you as much as possible. As you can see, it's not easy. We don't have our CO power right now, right? Yeah, we don't. So what more is there to do in that way? I can move you over there, battle you like this. It only does a tiny little bit of damage, but what more is there I can do? Right there, capture this one a bit more. So at least we have some things that are moving forward or healing up. But once again, if they destroy that, we'll have to do it all over again. And that's where it can get scary. Uh-oh. Oh no, there comes their superpower too. Can you withstand the cold? Do you think your troops can withstand the cold? Oh no, I don't know. Blizzard. Oh man. The animations are really cool though. Yikes. Uh. So now that they've done that though, they're gonna attack. Uh, I think this is game over for us. I don't really see how we recover from this thing now just because these guys are so difficult to defeat. Day 10 coming in now. Um, so what I think would be best, I guess we just move you forward a little bit more. Wait there. I need to get as many troops as I can out. The problem is they don't move very far anymore, as you can see. Like I just want you back to the city. I don't know if we can even get you there in time, but if we could have you attack this, that's gonna be something pretty big, right? Getting you down from seven to two. Okay, this is where we have an opportunity 
to make things work. I'll start capturing this city too, and that's how we can do this turn. So there's still a hope we can win this one. Oh, and it's, it's already passed. I thought it would take way longer. They're trying to heal up. Oh, this is where we could actually win. Um, If we could just run up here and just take this guy out, that's another way to do this. Remember, we don't have to take the HQ. As long as we can destroy all their units, that's another way to win. So there we go. We got it. What a tough unit. He really let Olaf have it, Nell. No time for celebration. If Olaf has access to medium tanks, then our current tactics won't suffice. A vast central command to ship us some, some new units. What? Even my medium tank was defeated? Curse that Nell. Mm, but it doesn't look like she has any air units ready to use yet. <laughs> I'm sure I'll enjoy our next encounter. We'll see about that. We were luckily able to win, but it was Great not job. easy. You completed the first mission. All right, well, there we go. And we get a rank of A. I'll, I'll take it. I thought I didn't do that well, but apparently the game disagrees. I did pretty good. All right, so we win and Olaf loses. We get a bunch of coins for that. I don't know what we spend coins on, but they look neat. Well done, you just successfully cleared your first mission. I'm so proud of you. I wanna celebrate this accomplishment by giving you a special gift. I would like to present your very own ID tag. This tag will track your accomplishments. Congratulations. Right now, the tag is empty, but as you continue to clear missions, you'll earn medals. Besides clearing missions, there are other accomplishments that can contribute to earning medals as well. By the way, as the holder of an ID tag, you are now authorized to access two new modes. First, you can now visit the War Room. There, you can hone your skills with a series of challenging battles. Second, you can now engage in head-to-head -head battles with friends on anywhere and online. Check out both the War Room and online on the main menu when you get a chance. Keep up the good work, Zebra. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I think that probably is a good spot for us to wrap it up. We had a great time here with our first little video on Advanced Wars 1 and 2. It looks like it's leading to the next mission here in the casual campaign. I've just received word that Olaf has moved in in on the Alara Bay. Guess he's not going to give up so easily. It appears that's not our only problem. Orange Star has hit a snag in its heavy armor development. Blue Moon, on the other hand, seems to have more than enough tanks. Yikes, can we defeat Olaf without any tanks of our own? I pulled some strings and had, a, had some helicopter, anti-air, and missile units sent down from the front lines, although that doesn't give us all that much additional firepower. Nevertheless, with careful planning, I'm confident that we can drive away the, that pompous old, I mean, that we can force Olaf to withdraw. It's a tankless job, but somebody's gotta do it. I get it, I get it. So yeah, there's still more to enjoy here in the campaign if we wish to do so. It's a very jam-packed game, especially with two full campaigns. We have Advanced Wars 1 and Advanced Wars 2 in here. So that's really cool. But with that being said, you know, this was sort of my first real Advanced Wars experience and I definitely like it. It's not usually the kind of game I'm very good at, but you guys can always let me know if you wanna see more videos on it or a full series. But with that being said, that is gonna wrap it up for today's episode of Zebra's Arcade. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.